Good evening everybody and welcome to this book review and this time I am focusing on the Airbnb story. It's a book by Lee Gallagher and the tagline says how three guys disrupted an industry, made billions of dollars and plenty of enemies. So why did I pick this book to review this evening? Well I'll tell you why. First and foremost, this was a book that I had intended to read fully and didn't get a chance to. But it's a book that I had intended to read fully during my master's because I did a dissertation on the sharing economy. And of course, Airbnb is probably one of two of the best known companies in the sharing economy. Two, sorry about that. Two is because I wanted to specifically look at how a business went from startup, really, really, really startup, very at the very beginning of a startup stage to a company that can list in the order of tens of billions of dollars. So I wanted to actually chart that journey as well. And I just wanted to see how they did so. Um, and the other reason is because this weekend I chose, I'm currently I'm here in a place called Shell. It's in a, a suburb of Antwerp. And I just thought to myself, well, really, can I review a book about Airbnb without staying in one? So this is my very first Airbnb experience. I have had an apartment here uh, since last night. I'll be here until tomorrow morning. So I've taken two days of an apartment. And uh, you can probably see there right behind me uh, all the books as I'm currently in the reading room in my apartment. And upstairs I have, obviously, I have my whole shebang up there as I took the premises just for me. And I got talking to the lady last night who owns here about her challenges and her experiences. Um, she had a very challenging experience last weekend, so that's why I suppose I started off there. But what I wanted to do was to really experience what Airbnb was really like before reviewing this book. And my experience has been that the app is very useful. Um, it's done very, very well. And overall, this has given me exactly what I wanted to experience as I'm in between a couple of different things. So yesterday in Antwerp, I was leading a trade show um, booth for Vectorvest Europe. We've been working with Vectorvest Europe for over seven years now. So I was leading the Dutch and Belgian team here. And tomorrow I am going to meet another one of our team in a different part of Belgium before then going on to Holland as I'm taking place, or taking part, sorry, in a presentation in a place called Bunnik on Tuesday night before flying home Wednesday. Okay, so what I needed was I needed a place of just complete solace of where I could just focus on a couple of different things that I wanted to do in a part of Belgium where I typically wouldn't see an Airbnb has done just that. Precisely what exactly the guys wanted to make happen. So there are the three reasons that I decided to focus on the Airbnb story this time. Now, what I do want to say about this book, okay, and, and I will tell you later on who I think are particularly uh, good people to be reading this, who is a particularly relevant for but can I just describe it in one way okay I'm going to describe this in one just one way this book the Airbnb story written by Lee Gallagher is like a one-to-one -one interview with Brian Chesky himself now Brian Chesky is a guy who is very 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 well known to any of us entrepreneurs who are looking to get bigger and bigger all the time Brian Chesky is of course the CEO now he also there's two other guys in the business but Brian Chesky is, is most well known what I really like about this is that this book is not done from a distance. It's not done where you're just reading about this story and about the history and, you know, from a distance, from a perspective, looking at how, how it developed. Lee Gallagher sat down and she spoke to so many different people in, in the business and outside the business. She spoke to people who are Airbnb hosts. She spoke to people who are Airbnb travellers. Honest to God, this woman really spoke to the individuals. Now, if I was to ring Brian Chesky this minute, um, which I chance my arm are doing if I, if I wanted to, but if I was to ring him this minute and say, hi, I'm Susan, uh, this is my first Airbnb experience, I'm an ambitious entrepreneur, and I'd love to sit down and have a coffee with you. I'm not quite sure that I would get through to Brian Chesky and that he'd drop everything and say, sure. The thing is, though, is that if you read this book, that's exactly what you get. Now, of course, I can't cultivate the questions that I would ask of Brian, uh, now that Brian and I are on first name terms. But um, while I couldn't cultivate or, or tailor the questions I would ask of Brian, I certainly felt that I got a real insight to the person, to the story, to what was really going on. And that, that was brilliant. But you know what I really liked about this book? And I think 
This is partly to do, of course, with the way in which Lee wrote it, but it's also to do with how, the, how they answered and the honesty that they brought to this. They wrote about their mistakes. Now, I'm not looking for anybody to write about their mistakes so that I can see that other people make mistakes. Hopefully not as many as I do, but that they do. But rather to see that mistakes certainly do happen. We all know that. But that mistakes can be surmounted, that they can be temporary. Or as I heard recently, uh, what a super, super, super phrase that I heard Carly, sorry, Carmel McKinney. Um, she is the chair of the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service. I interviewed her recently uh, for the IOD Northern Ireland Conference. Okay, And do you know what she said that day? Something that really stuck in my mind. She said, failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. Okay, And that is what absolutely this book embodies. So I'm going to give you one example, one example of a mistake that they made. And when I think back now, like, I, I don't really think this, this could be very well known about their business at all. One of the mistakes they made was that, I, I don't know if you know where the name Airbnb comes from, but it basically comes from the fact that Airbnb is a business which started off by offering air mattresses in accommodation. And the B&B side of things was that in order to offer hospitality in order to offer your home um, with an air mattress included you had to be there to give them the breakfast also hence the B&B site but imagine this in order to get on the website a you had to have an air mattress and b you also had to be there to give them the breakfast so at the very beginning when these guys were really struggling to get people on board they turned away people who were offering beds actual beds. One guy bought an air mattress to put on a bed to be able to be eligible for going on the site. And also, they would not allow people to take a whole residence. You couldn't take a whole apartment like I've done this weekend. You couldn't take a whole house because, of course, the person had to be there to give them the breakfast. So the whole idea of business travellers um, or even people who wanted to sleep simply in a bed or people who wanted to take the whole... Families, of course, because they wanted the whole premises. That idea... They did, not alone did they not think of it, they discounted it. And they said, no, 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 no. This is supposed to be quirky and it's supposed to be enjoyable and it's supposed to be different and it's supposed to be for people who are, you know, flexible and all this sort of thing, completely discounting so much of their market. So I was, you know, I was enthused by that to see that, yes, okay, um, even the biggest companies in the world, of which Airbnb now is, um, make mistakes that are big and temporary. So hopefully my small and hopefully their temporary too, um, they go away. And as long as I keep thinking and keep talking to my customers, I'll be okay. Um, another thing as well is that a lot of us think, wouldn't it be great if we were bigger? Wouldn't it be great if we had more staff? Wouldn't it be great if we had more customers? Wouldn't it be great if we had more users? Wouldn't it be great if we had more business? Wouldn't it be great if we had more offices? Wouldn't it be great if our reach was bigger? And what this book does, what I really like about what this book does is that it shows you the challenges of scale and it shows you all of the people who come around you the bigger you get and and how how they try to uh, i want to choose a better world but or a better word but they're but maybe words like how they attack you so you know they talk about imitators pe people who are airbnb imitators people who have created businesses like them built them up in a certain area or geography before they could get there and then said okay buy us and for a very high price. Uh, so they, And of course, then they also talk about people who don't like the concept of Airbnb. And I'm sure many of you know of the challenges that they face, particularly in places like New York and Barcelona, where governments are saying no, because it's distorting, they say, the housing market or the way in which people pay tax, etc. So it also just shows you that as, as those of you who are thinking about scale and thinking that, you know, when I get bigger, it'll be, it'll be easier and maybe even it'll be utopia. It'll be perfect because then I won't have things to worry about. We'll be making so much money, it'll be fine. Um, well, there'll be new problems. And those new problems, by the way, don't throw me off. But it's good to know what they are and it's good to hear how, how they're coming along and it's, it's, it's good to hear a, a range of different things like that. Now I will say, and this is where I'm coming closer now to actually saying who is this for, there were light bulb moments of practical business ideas in here, light bulb moments of where I suddenly like just maybe looked at, at a paragraph in here and said, of course, of course, that's exactly, that's exactly what I should be doing, of course, why didn't I think of this earlier? And I'm approaching eight years, will be eight years old in September. The Hayes Collerton Group will be eight years old in September. And I have been in business before that. So to think 
sometimes that I don't know these things. Sometimes it's frustrating, but of course it is a journey, not a destination. But I will say that there are light bulb business moments in here. Um, but that particularly is if you're in a, if you're in an environment, if you're in a business that's seeking to build a community or if you want to particularly partake in the peer to peer economy, specifically those two, if you're and of course scale. Right. But there's lots of books can talk to you about scale. I, I mentioned to Peers Inc. in my last book review. Um, now, Robin Chase would know Brian Chesky very well because Robin Chase set up Zipcar. And of course, Brian Chesky was the CEO of this business. So, uh, you know, the fact that there would be kind of commonalities between the two of them, of course, is natural. But I, I do just want to make that point is that if you are thinking about building a community and um, particularly in the peer to peer or sharing economy, there is light bulb moments of business sense in here. Um, one thing that I really admire about these three guys, OK, irrespective of whatever you think about the business, right? Just forget about the business for a second, irrespective of any of that. What I really like about these three guys, and Brian Chesky in particular, is they started off being three co-founding guys who set up in San Fran, and then they went to New York, and because that's where a lot of their customers were. And they looked around, and they saw a business opportunity, and then they built it, and then they grew it, and then they scaled it, and then they went outwards, and then they went deeper. And for any of you who are Airbnb-ers, so for any of you who are part of the Airbnb community at all, you will know that they've now branched into Airbnb experiences. So today I had, now delightfully, right, just want to preface this by delightfully, I had a delightfully busy week this week. Um, I came home from Texas on Monday morning after being at South by Southwest. I had two really great events this week where I was keynote speaker or MC. Um, I had a range of meetings. I did a podcast, which we'll be telling you about shortly. Um, I had a plethora of meetings, right? So look, the key thing is that I had a busy week and therefore what I wanted to do today was little, right? So what I did today was went for a gorgeous walk in the Belgian countryside, went out for lunch and brainstormed about a couple of things that I'm doing here now, including tonight, um, got ready for the week, etc. But to a large degree, and I watched a little bit of TV as well, but um, apart from that, I want to do very little. Let's say that I was here and I wanted to do something like the locals, okay? I want to do... Uh, chocolate tasting tour which of course is a key thing to do in Belgium anytime in fact anytime anyway but Belgium in particular let's say that I wanted to I don't know do something that I don't even know about something that the, that the real locals would do here that's what Airbnb experiences is all about and that's where there's a whole new area and of course they've also expanded into a, a couple of other smaller pieces along the way and so on and so when I look at the growth of this business right they've deepened they've widened they've scaled and yet the three guys that started it are still the three guys there today. Now, how do you do that? Because a lot of people, a lot of business heroes, you could say, right? A lot of people that we know, uh, household names, many of them start off as founders, then they get the business to a certain level and then they say, no, I'm walking away now. It's becoming a company, then it's becoming a corporation, then it's becoming a listed organization. Stakeholders change, how do we stick to our values and so on? So therefore, there's a lot of business people who are very, very good, but at a part of that journey. These guys have done it all, particularly Brian. And there was a whole section devoted to that where he spoke about how he built himself as a leader of a tiny three-person company. And for a while, by the way, it was two um, because the, the really tech guy was kind of dipping in and dipping out for a while at the beginning. So, so how he led the company from a really small startup of three people and no customers um, right up to where it is today fascinates me. And there is not that many people that I know of who've done that. And, and I really, really liked that as well. Um, I was also interested in looking at how and what this book does, uh, what Lee Gallagher really makes sure to, to feature in, is how a company thinks. There was a key change happened in Airbnb. It went from being a startup, which was all about, you know, the numbers and getting people on board and being a great company and recruiting the best staff, you know, all that business stuff. And then it became a hospitality company. And then it became focusing on how do we give people experiences? How do we make sure that the people who come to Airbnb want to not just become customers, but become people who want to become everything about it. They want to tell their friends about it. They want to become part of an Airbnb movement, as or so, so they're called. They want to defend Airbnb against people who are, like I mentioned earlier, attacking them. They want to be people who come to the Airbnb summit where they bring all, I'm sorry, not all, but their most um, dedicated Airbnb hosts together. How, how do you get to that point? And a key shift there 
was that it became or went from a business, a startup business, let's be a business, let's grow, let's scale, etc., to a hospitality company. Now, what they don't talk about, or what Lee Gallagher doesn't talk about, and what Robin Chase did in Piers Inc., which I reviewed for you before, like I mentioned, is um, there are, of course, people who make an entirely professional living out of Airbnb. If I bought a block of apartments and I rent them all out by Airbnb, I could de facto become a short term let landlord. And Airbnb could have, you know, navigated its way to angle solely towards those people as opposed to like where I am here. You know, the, the owner of the house of the apartment is living downstairs and their family live here. Um, I have the apartment upstairs, but this is the only Airbnb that they have. So in that case, what Airbnb has said that it truly, truly, truly wanted to focus on having lots of people, lots of homes, lots of variety and it also goes through the various different stages that airbnb travelers went through so it went from being you know a surplus stock quirky let's try this out can't get a hotel room in san francisco for a conference at all so therefore i'm going to try something else just because i need to stay there which is where it started then it moved into what they call the castle and igloo stage that now i don't know whether that's lee gallagher's term or whether it's someone else's term but that that was what um she called it so i want to stay in a tree house i want to stay in an igloo i want to stay in a castle i want to stay in uh something you know that i would not come across in any way shape or form i think i told you this before i stayed in a yacht one night found it on booking.com stayed in a yacht hotel in rotterdam a most remarkable experience really and truly most remarkable experience so that was the second phase of Airbnb and then it moved into mainstream. And I actually think myself that, and I'm taking myself as a test case, now I find Airbnb is becoming at the beginning of mainstream. Mainstream today is hotels, okay, broadly speaking. Maybe for a budget traveller it might be hostels, but you're talking about that, that's, that's mainstream. I think Airbnb is at the beginning. I think it's at the beginning of becoming mainstream. Because if I haven't done this before, and as I say, take myself as a business traveler test case, um, uh, I'm usually somebody, I love trends, I love watching them. I'm never the first to, to try something typically I find. Um, and that's not because I'm adventurous, but because I need things to work, I need things to be seamless. Um, and I, I don't need, I'm not in it for the adventure, like I was, I was in it for something else, which is to actually go and get started or to, to stay somewhere or whatever. But if... As I'm talking to more and more business people, Airbnb is becoming uh, not just a try it out or last, not just a last resort, but you know, positive. I'm going for Airbnb first. So I think, I think it's, it's at that stage and, and that now is where the book left it, I will say. Just when this book was, was book going to print, Airbnb experiences were beginning. So that's, that's where this, this brings us up to. Um, also, you know what I don't think we think about often enough as business owners um, and in fact, as anybody, whether you're a parent or whether you're an employee or whether you're a student, we often don't think about the indirect impact we have. You know, somebody sometimes sends us an email and says, oh, you know that introduction that you made for me two years ago? We're actually now business partners. Or actually, I'll give you an example. Last night, um, I got a message on, on Messenger from a savvy teen who attended our course in Cork two years ago um, telling me about something that he has now just, it's a recent achievement that he had. And he just said, things are looking up, Susan, thanks a million. You know, sorry, that really brings a smile to my face now. But um, we, we often don't think about the indirect impact that we have because we're busy, we're focusing on today and so on. Uh, Lee does do that. Lee Gallagher does do that. What she does do is she goes and she looks at all of the, like the spill out businesses, the overflow businesses, um, for example, there's now businesses that will facilitate the greeting of guests and giving them the key and, and let's just say off you go at, at that point. So I'm going to give you a case in point. I'm going to rent out my house for two months. I'm not going to be there. I wanted to offer it an Airbnb. People don't want to stay for two months. They want to stay for two days. Who is going to give them the key? Who is going to top up the fridge? Who is going to clean the place? So there's other companies now that take care of all of that instead. So that's what I'm talking about is Lee Gallagher does look at the indirect impact. Um, now I have looked, I've, I've looked into economic studies of the impact of Airbnb in various different cities. So I've done that myself, but their economic reports, Lee looks at this from a narrative, uh, a narrative point of view. Um, as I come to the end of this um, review, I just also want to say um, one other thing. And that is that uh, man of my own heart here, Brian reads a lot. He reads an awful lot. And if this comes to the, at the very, very end of the book. He talks about uh, how much he reads and how many different angles that he reads at and why he reads. And 
the various different um, diverse sources of reading that he has. Now, as I'm sure I've told you before, anybody who's watched a book review of mine before, I really started reading again when I had to read due to the Masters for about 10 years. Yeah, from about 10 years after I left college and starting the Masters, I must say I didn't read an awful lot. Just just read. I mean, obviously, I, in the in our world, um, in Hayes College, you know, from the point of view of training and speaking, of course, I do a lot of reading there. And, and that typically tends to be driven by whatever areas, that I, whatever briefs I'm working on uh, at the moment. But they, again, tend to be reports and newspapers and so on. But to pick up a read, uh, sorry, to pick up a book and read it, that's different. I hadn't really done that because in between doing the master's in college, I did CFA, um, Charged Financial Analyst exams. And that was six thick, 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 thick books where it was just me and them. But that wasn't reading either. That was reading with a, with a, review, to, or with a view to doing an exam. So it's only now I've started. And the way in which I made sure, so afterwards, right, after we finished the, the master's, I said to everyone, I said, I'm going to keep reading. And, every, and anybody that studies a master's will tell you the same thing. Oh, the reading was great, but then I intended to stop doing it, and sure that was that. How I have made sure that I've kept going is because of you. I genuinely mean it, is because I've committed to you that I will do a book review once a month, every month, and anybody who reads our newsletter, you can sign up for that at thepositiveeconomist.com. It's free, so, you know, it's a, simply an email into your inbox. I have promised to you that I will read a book once a month, every month, and review it for you. So this public accountability is what makes sure that I keep reading. So, um, and of course, I've seen the benefit of it, really and truly. I've definitely seen seen the benefit, of course. And it, it's a fantastic pleasure. So I, it, it took me a while to read this. It took me a while to read it because I had to put it down lots of times and say, oh, I should really go and do that. Um, and it's a read that, you know, it takes concentration. Others are simple ones, but this one takes concentration in a lovely way. So um, I just wanted to make the point that Brian Chesky reads a lot, as I believe many business leaders should and do. Um, but also, and this is something, again, I wholeheartedly agree with him, wholeheartedly. And I want to build a new business on this. And I'll tell you about that in months and years to come, is he finds his sources. He has a range of different people that he goes to about hospitality or legal or managing people or going into one particular area or, or a certain piece of the law or the sharing economy or engaging users, retention, creating a community. Now, of course, he can pick up the phone and he mentions, right, there's some serious name dropping in here now. He can pick up the phone to Jeff Bezos and Warren Buffett and Sharon Sandberg. Again, now, if I was to, you know, give any one of those a call, you know, maybe I might in years to come, but I'm not sure how quickly I would get that that phone call returned. But of course he can, right? But that's not the point. It's not the point about who or their seniority. It's about that you start, not that start either, that's not the word, that you think about who can I turn to for advice? Now I turn to lots of people, like countless, countless, countless people. I do, I really, really do. And I know that I'm good at a couple of things um, but there are millions of people much stronger than me at most things. And I don't need that pressure of feeling that I need to be the best at everything. Because first of all, I can't be. And second of all, if I'm only good at a couple of things and I really work on those, like that'll do. So I go to countless people for advice and direction and, and their thoughts and their analysis and their insights. That's one of the reasons that I stay in B&Bs or Airbnb now is because I... I talk to the people who own these com these properties and I say to them, you know, what's going on in Belgium? Like here in Antwerp. So I say to people, where are your customers coming from? What is going on in the Belgian economy at the moment? What's their view of Brexit? What's their view of the euro? What's their view of the way in which Macron is moving forward um, with European fiscal integration, for example? Um, what's the traffic like? Where do people go to school here? How long do they go to school? Why? What courses are they studying? So every single person that I meet, genuinely, I mean that can be a source so I get my information from everywhere I'm like sponge um, because I know it's there and I value it I truly truly value it so so does he Brian Chesky absolutely do, does that so in summary okay and I'm going to stop here and I really wanted to thank those of you uh, a couple of very familiar faces and names have been tuning in tonight thank you very much indeed for your time um what I will say this book is is that it is a business masterclass for those who want to build a community build scale and blaze a trail Thank you very much, Lee Gallagher, for putting this together. It is a book that I've thoroughly enjoyed and I've really taken a lot of things out of it that I can implement. And thank you for introducing me to Airbnb.
Thank you, everyone. Have a super week. Thank you. Good night.